Hey, what's going on guys? I hope you're having an amazing day. I'm gonna share a video today. It's gonna be a short one. Um, you know, I was recently invited by CBT News uh, on Inside Automotive Show. I got to talk about the issues, challenges car dealerships are facing with social media and where to look in terms of solutions and why I think this is still underrated as an acquisition channel, but also retention channels for you know, local dealerships. I hope you enjoy. If you have questions for me, leave them in the comments. I'll drop the show notes in the, in the description as well. I hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm Cheyenne Malone. Well, in this day and age, it seems as though everyone is on social media of some sort, right? And you should be if you work in sales or service, especially of a dealership. But should social media use expand beyond those roles? Joining us now to lend insight into dealership marketing today and the role of social media is Mark Lavoie, founder of Autobahn Digital and Puzzle Auto. Welcome, Mark. Glad to have you. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Talk to us about the importance of having a strong marketing strategy because we know it is. Yes, well, I, I think for car dealerships, at least in the automotive industry, it's um, one of the best industry to build a social media presence because, you know, historically people have been either not trust trusting the car dealership network or car dealerships because, you know, they're scared of not having a great deal and everything. But social media is really there to build trust educate customers on what has to be done. It's a great opportunity as well to have a lot of um, presence, visibility in your local market, um, free in a way, because you don't have to pay for to be on social media. You can do organic content, you can do paid ads as well. But I, I just think it's, it's such a great opportunity for dealerships to be building a sense of community uh, in their market. You know, and you can reach me. so many people too with social media. Yeah. What are successful leaders and dealership owners doing right now as they market to consumers? Well, the most successful people I know and I see, um, you know, I've been looking at helping whatever, right? Um, they're educating their customers. They're, they're not using social media in a way to, you know, just push offers and interest rate and, you know, discounts. They're really using social media to help their customers answering their questions uh, at a greater scale, um, educating them on whatever it's a better, like it's better to lease or finance a car. But some people just don't know because they don't know about, you know, they've had bad experiences in the past or they're, they're just buying a car every three to five years, right? Um, sometimes it, being in the industry, we just forget how stressful it could be. So dealers really approaching this as you know, as an education standpoint, you know, helping their customers are really winning in, in their market. I'm curious as to what type of content you think works best. Is it, you know, testimonials? Is it more, we got this new fleet of cars in or sales or a little bit of everything? Um, the right answer would be a little bit of, every, uh, of everything, but it's sometimes hard to do everything right, right? So um, what I like is to push you know, dealerships to do a little bit of evergreen content, which is testimonials. You can reuse this in two weeks from now and two years from now, right? You don't have to redo them every single month. Like just, uh, whereas like, you know, with, with the new offers and new interest rates, OEM co-op, right? We have to redo it every single month. Um, you know, it's time consuming. Um, but you know, what, what really works is just content you can reuse over and over again, just because you can show that to a different set of people. Education, again, is a great way to do it because you can bring people in your funnel through education um, about the car buying experience and then present them offers. Uh, if they dig in, if they visit your websites, if they fall into your audiences and they see your ads at some point, it's a great way to do it. It works really well. And who should be using social media when it comes to the dealership? Is it more the sales department, teams, or maybe a service, or everyone? Um, again, everyone would benefit, but in terms of being, in a way, doable or manageable, I've seen sales department benefit more from it. Yeah. Um, usually, salespeople in their DNA are a little bit more outgoing. I, I'm general, generalizing right now, but it's still the way it is. Uh, they have more presence and it's, it's more natural maybe to go out and sometimes and do social media uh, because you can bring in leads, right? You get, you get, you get to see those customers come in the, like at the store. Uh, I've seen some service departments do, in, do it uh, pretty efficiently, but most of all, it's really sales and marketing usually doing that. As long as it's a sustainable operation for me, I think it makes sense. 
because sometimes you'll see dealerships go crazy. They'll buy like a studio, you know, how yeah. people are in the automotive space. They don't want to do it like halfway. Right. Oh no. And uh, they just realize it's, it's a hell of a game to be in. It's cool now because you're motivated, but you have to keep going in the months to come. So it pays off. Right. Oh, they want to uh, do it and do it full. Forward. Yeah, I, I, I see people just go crazy just because they, they, they just like a switch, you know, it's switch in their mind. Yeah, like, we got to do this, right? Yeah. Um, and you have to kind of start by the, the basics. And I want to say this in the automotive space, dealerships specifically, we're not so great at building content and just being in social and social media. So just being average is actually you're better than pretty much anyone in your market. So that's what's cool about it. You don't have to go crazy. What are some of the common challenges that you see dealerships face when they're, you know, trying to post and get a strong social media presence out there? Um, like I said, sustainab sustainability. So sometimes um, some people will take this hat of social media content or they'll do it themselves. They're there in sales or marketing. And then that, pe that, that person leaves or, um, you know, is put up with new roles, new responsibilities. And then they, you know, they slowly start to, you know, drop the social media content part. Or um, another challenge I've been seeing is that let's say you're doing social media because you want to at some point build content and build like a flow of leads coming in. Uh, it takes time. It's a long term game. If you are expecting like doubling your sales uh, next month because you were just posting on Facebook, uh, it's not going to happen this way. Um, <laughs> So sadly, I, I, I would love to, yeah. but it's not how it is. Like it, when you're working with paid ads on social media, it kind of works because you can just scale it up and just generate more leads and more leads. Um, but if you want to do like true organic content, it takes patience. And sometimes in the auto industry, uh, we've been trained to see everything by the month. So patience is not a strong suit, you know. Okay. I like how you're saying that true organic content. So on the flip side, are there ways that you can post things that are, I don't know, cheesy? Like <laughs> are there don'ts? Yeah. Don't post this. And what are well, they? Well, as long as there's a mix, if it's 100% cheesy, uh, it's not going to help. I, I, I think a good mix, uh, I call them usually content pillars. So just choosing three or four things or areas you want to talk about when you know, creating content online. If one of them is cheesy because you have that personality and there's some someone in the store that's just funny, naturally funny, you know, mm -hmm. and you're doing some silly stuff that works, but just don't forget to do some things that actually help people, not only be like on the spectrum, just not only being on the fun side, just do a little bit more of education as well. I like that. I like it. You. How often should a dealerships be posting? As much as possible. You know, if it's sustainable, um, I've been working with some some guys that are posting two, three, or, uh, two, three times a day. It's oh, just wow. it just seems insane for people. But when you talk like when you think about it, when you get good at creating content and, and I want to specify this, it's mainly short term, like short form video. So reels or, you know, TikToks. So it's 20, 30 second clips, right? Um, but there, there are ways to make it more efficient in terms of return on investment or, or return on time. So at least if you're posting two or three times a day or you're spending a little bit of time on social, if, if it's to create content versus consuming content, it makes sense. And, um, you know, you like, I've seen some guys, I'm doing it myself, just doing one reel on Facebook, on Facebook, Instagram or TikTok. What I'll do is I'll I'll make sure to automate those clips to be sent on other platforms at the same time. So I don't have to post over on six platforms. I'm only posting once, but mm -hmm. it's posting six on six platforms, three times a day. So it's really 18 posts in a way. And you know, you mentioned if it's something good, post away. Is there a such thing as over sharing or over posting? Cause we know in our personal lives, <laughs> we all have those people yeah. that just overshare. <laughs> yeah. Can you do the Absolutely. same? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think as long as it retains to, I always like to think what's in it for me if I'm the customer, right? So if I'm posting something and there's no gain for my customer, you, you can just simply, simply ref, reframe it or refrain from posting that thing and just moving on to the next topic. You know, it, like at the end of the day, if you want to put this amount of time and effort, um, you know, talking to car buyers in your area, you just want to make it so every single video counts and brings a new piece of information, tackles a new objection, or answer a new answers a new question, 
or just maybe shows like a different set, like portion of like part of your personality. So you could go all education or you could go maybe a video about what you like about the Silverado or what like the five more five things you like about the, the new Hyundai Elantra, whatever. Right. And then people will connect to you and they'll ask more questions and you can use this as fuel to create more content snowballs in a, in a way. If you do it enough, it snowballs. And then what about times? Are there, you know, preferred times of day that people should be posting? Um, I think it's been a hot topic in maybe a few years ago, but I feel like the, like the most effective way to push content right now is through video. And those video will live. Like when I'm talking video, I'm, I'm really talking about YouTube shorts, TikToks, or reels from Facebook and Instagram. These videos will live a couple of days and then like some, sometimes they'll just relive again. If that's, a, if that's a word, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. in two weeks from now, it'll pick up and then you'll get a thousand, 10,000 more views and you don't even know why. And I, I, I think from this standpoint, it doesn't really matter what time you're posting as long as you're doing it. I think at some point we have to be conscious about not stopping for like the technicalities, but just doing the work, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, too, you kind of summed it up even at the beginning when you talk about using it as a tool, a resource that is free, complimentary, right, instead of a, a pain in the you-know-what, because a lot of people think that as well. But it does it does help, and it's there for free. Any final thoughts for us, Mark? Yeah. Um, if, you, if you're not on social media and not doing content, see, like think about it this way. If you could build a database of multiple used, uh, use yourself, um, that sell 24 seven for your store, would you do it? And pretty much for all of you guys, it's true because whenever I land onto like a salesperson feed and they're, they've been doing it, it's 300 videos of these copies of that guy, you know, selling the vehicle, the brand, you know, why to do business with them. It's, uh, it's just insane when you see the amount of leads that can come in from that, that type of strategy. It's, it's impressive. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we'd be a little bit stupid not to do it. Right and now. it's the day and age we live in, right? Mark oh, yeah. Lavoie, founder Thank of you. Autobahn Digital and Puzzle Auto. Thank you so much for all of your insight today. It was definitely intriguing. I think a lot of people will get a lot of good use out of this. And thank all of you for watching Inside Automotive. And we're now streaming on Roku and Apple TV. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you want to drop a like and subscribe, please feel free. If you better yet, if you want to ask a question, drop a comment, let me know what you thought about this video. It was a super short video, just a couple of questions, but I, I could um, talk about this stuff for hours, potentially days. So I'm going to drop more information in the description. If you want to reach out, have questions, feel free to do so. I hope you have an amazing day. Take it easy.